where is a persuasive message coming from? Welcome to Critical Thinking Scan, where we look at how you can think about any faith-challenging message and arrive at a biblical, logical conclusion yourself. I'm Patricia Engler, and today I'm going to unpack check number three of the seven checks of critical thinking which any Christian can use based on the techniques that helped me as a Christian student at Secular University. And check three of thinking critically about any message is check the source. Who's telling you this message? Now, there are three questions you can ask to get a good sense of what kind of source you're dealing with. First, you can ask, what's the source's credibility? How trustworthy are they? Sometimes valid information comes from less than credible sources, and invalid information comes from credible sources. Still, a source's credibility can lend you solid insight into how seriously you can take their message. And the most credible human source is an expert in a relevant field. So, a message about microbiology will be a lot more trustworthy coming from an expert microbiologist than from someone who's in another field, like chemistry, or from some random guy on the internet. Trying to back up a statement by citing a non-expert like a random guy on the internet is a type of fallacy or flawed logic called appeal to false authority. There's also another fallacy called appeal to authority, which involves saying a message is true just because an expert said so without supplying any other evidence. Like, dinosaurs evolved into birds because my paleontology professor said so. Well, a paleontology professor might know a lot of information about dinosaurs, but remember, even experts can believe wrong information and everyone is biased by the worldview assumptions that we start with. So the second question to ask is, what is the source's worldview? Are they interpreting the world through the lens of man's word or God's word? Remember, the worldview that we start with helps determine the assumptions that we use and the conclusions that we end up with. So knowing the source's worldview will be really helpful for separating fact from assumptions later on in the critical thinking process. Finally, the third question to ask is whether the source might have ulterior motives for saying what they're saying. See, people say and do things for a lot of different reasons, not all of which may be obvious. News reporters, for instance, often have to write in a way to keep their readers and advertisers happy. So what gets published and how it's worded can be very financially and politically driven. And that's all really helpful to keep in mind when considering a message source. But sometimes part of checking the source involves not just thinking about the person sharing the information, but also how they collected that information. For instance, once, when I was writing an article about evolutionary beliefs in Britain, I nearly wrote that only 3% of English science teachers believe that God created humans and did not use evolution while he was doing it. But then I realized that the study where that statistic came from only looked at 55 teachers in four schools out of tens of thousands of science teachers in the UK. The study still uncovered some pretty interesting information, but its sample size, that's the number of teachers it looked at, was too small for me to write that 3% of all British science teachers accepted creation. In the same way, a report from 2017 has suggested that a lot of studies about natural selection don't necessarily use big enough samples to draw accurate conclusions. Now, as you can learn from other Answers in Genesis resources, natural selection can produce the types of changes required to evolve one kind of living thing into another anyway. But my point is that sometimes researchers can make mistakes. Studies do get reviewed to catch as many mistakes as possible. But like that 2017 report showed, even widely accepted research practices don't always yield accurate results. And frequently, the popular press and social media circulate information and statistics without explaining where that data came from or how it was collected. So it's often worthwhile to go back to the original source to see for yourself where the information came from, how it was collected, and if it's being reported right. This is all under check number three of the seven checks of critical thinking. Check the source. For more on how to think critically about any face challenging message, you can access my other CT scan videos packed with tactics, tips, and tools that helped me as a Christian student at Secular University. Thank you for watching. Hey, it's
Patricia. Just wanted to let you know that if you like these videos, a free, easy way to help Answers in Genesis Canada produce more content and equip more people to defend their faith is to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, click the bell, and of course share these resources. I know you might hear that kind of thing a lot, but the reason these actions are so important is they inform social media algorithms to help these videos reach more people who can benefit from them. And that's especially helpful because advertising is super expensive. But this way, even media platforms which are often unfriendly towards biblical content become tools to promote gospel outreach for free. And if you're on board to share this message of biblical authority and want to give, you can also make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking the link below. Thank you so much.